Greetings and salutations everyone. Hi there, I'm Mark Absalon and welcome to this edition of Mark Absalon's Video Tips and Tricks, where I'm going to show you a cool tutorial here on Sony Vegas Pro 9. You know, the only thing I can do exciting in this video is move my cursor around in circles because it makes people dizzy and I can't show my face, so this is the exciting part right here. Yeah, look at that. Well, anyway guys, getting back to what I was ta originally talking about. Like I said, we're picking up where we left off in the last tutorial on Sony Vegas Pro 9. We're going to, in our last one we talked about capture, in this one we're going to talk about the media pool and how important and all the little features and functions in the media pool to make your workflow easier. Now I know there are a lot of guys out there that do Vegas Pro tutorials and one of the things that really kind of driven me crazy about all the tutorials out there is they don't show you step by step to make you proficient in the program because you need to know what everything does to create some of the cool stuff so that's what we're doing with this whole series and that's why it's taking so long hopefully soon we'll be up to actually editing and doing some really cool things with that so we've got a few more videos to go before we get to that one well guys let me throw us some shameless plugs here before I begin this tutorial the first shameless plug is for my website markapsalon.com. Go over there and check out my tutorial DVDs. I think that the link is broken on the website because we're updating the whole website. The whole website's about to be updated and it's going to be a new website that's more interactive and everything. So I think the link is broken. So if you have problems going to it from there, you can always go over to tubetape.com. They're selling um, my DVDs over there and you can search it that way. You can also go to my uh, main page here on YouTube and click the giant icon with the DVDs on it. And that'll take you to it too. And uh, you'll learn a lot of info from these DVDs. My DVDs actually are really low priced. The same information in my DVDs are what you'll find in the $80 to $100 DVDs on the same topic. I just keep my prices a lot lower than the other guys do. And also guys, by purchasing my tutorial DVDs, you're helping me do videos on YouTube free like this. So I thank you for buying them. It really helps me out. Uh, another shameless plug is for our contest. We're doing a contest every 10,000 subscribers here on YouTube. We're giving away cool and fabulous prizes to five randomly drawn subscribers. We're also giving away a cool prize to a random commenter on one of my videos. And we're giving away a cool prize to one of my MySpace friends that will be randomly drawn. And uh, you can click right over here and it'll take you to the video as to what we're giving away this time. And you might want to watch the whole video all the way through that we're working on right now, the tutorial, and then come back at the end to this point and you can click the video and see what we're giving away. So we're giving away some cool stuff. And you enter by subscribing to my channel, adding me as a friend on MySpace, and commenting on my videos. So that's awesome. Well guys, let's get back to the actual tutorial here. The first thing we want to do before we start getting into the, the media pool and all that jazz is when we go to File, we want to click New, and let's go ahead and select uh, 720, 24 frames a second, and then don't worry about the deanalyze stuff here. We'll click OK on that to clear it out. Now you'll notice over here on the side in the dockable windows, I have all my tabs at the top. This is a preference. You can do this if you want to. I, I like them on the top, so that's where they are. But the first thing we want to do is we want to click Project Media. Yes, and when you click Project Media, you're going to notice several different buttons that come up here. Now, the first button is the Sweep button. What it does is it removes any unused media that's in the timeline from the actual media bin. Like let's say, let me just give you some examples on this. Like let's say you have a DVD-R and it's got some clips on it and um, you have it in your DVD-ROM and you were using it in your timeline and you know, you you had it in there and you're like, you know, this clip just isn't gonna work so you delete it from the timeline. Well that clip is still in your media bin and if you take that DVD-ROM out and you close your project and everything, when you oh, reopen it the next time, uh, Sony Vegas Pro is going to ask you, it's like, we can't find this media. Do you want us to search for it? Do you want us to leave it offline, etc.? It's kind of a little annoying window. It's kind of useful if you lose media, but if 
it's media that you don't need because you're not using it in your project anymore it's kind of annoying but um, what the sweep button does is it removes that media from the bin so that window will not come up if you've taken the DVD-ROM out or moved the media because you, you're not using it in your timeline anymore. So that's a really cool button to have and uh, I've used it quite a bit. The next one after that is import media and what this does is when you click on it you can bring in different media files even uh, media files that you were using in another project like for instance this Vegas project right here was for an animated uh, bug that I did for the spare change video well if I click that it's gonna bring in all the media I used for it right up here so there you go it's right there and you can uh, see it in the media bin so that's kinda cool uh, let's go ahead and erase that though let's remove it from the project you know what let's just leave it I'll see that there we go and uh, the next button after that is of course our capture video which we've gone over extensively in our last video and you know what happens when we when we click that button now the one after that is the get photo button and what this does if you click it it'll hook up to any scanners that you might have or, or uh, um, cameras and you can import the photos or the scans directly into Vegas so that's a really cool feature uh, the next button is one that's very useful and it is the extract audio button uh, from a CD and what you do is you have your royalty free CD that you can use in your videos and you put that in your CD-ROM or your DVD-ROM and when you click this all the tracks and everything will come up and of course you can play each track and once you select the track then you will click OK and it will ask you where you want to save it on the hard drive and uh, once you save it, it extracts that audio onto the hard drive so it's easily incorporated into uh, Vegas Pro 9. Now, of course, you can choose which drive you're wanting to pull it from and your speed and configure and eject and etc. So that's a really nice feature and you'll use it quite a bit. The button after that is the Get Media from the Web button. And if you click that, what's going to happen is your browser is going to open and it's going to take you straight to Sony. Well, this is a Sony product, so they're going to do this. And it takes you to all their loops, uh, their vision, uh, vision series, their sound effects that are all really too free and et cetera. So that, that's kind of how it works on that button. And um, those are the buttons that are going to be up there initially. Now, you'll notice here it'll say all media and media bins. Now, you can import all media and just keep it in this overall bin, but it's a lot easier for your workflow and to create multiple bins. You, what you'll do is you'll right click and you'll click create new bin. And let's call this spare change. And um, you can also do sub bins of that. And let's make another one here. We'll right click create new media, media bin. We'll just call that one sound. So you can have multiple bins within the all media bin. And like I said, it makes it very easy on your workflow. I myself, I've been very guilty of making my workflow very difficult by spreading things around everywhere. So this is something that will make your workflow smooth, quick, and you'll get done with your project a lot sooner than if you spread it everywhere sometimes like I've done. Uh, also, something that's neat about Vegas too is it doesn't do like some other nonlinear editing programs that will create a separate bin and copy all the files so you've got two different files which just seems totally stupid to me because it takes up so much space what Vegas does is it just makes a link to wherever the media is uh, so you don't want to delete the media because then you'll have some major problems so that's another really cool thing about the media pool here on Vegas now let's go ahead and let's click the spare change and to add stuff to our media bin we'll want one of these highlighted as to which bin you're going to put it in and you'll go up to explore and I already have opened here our, the last spare change I worked on and I've got this intro from 19, the 1980s Mark Headroom that I did and what we'll do is we will right click on that and we will add it to the project media list. So we do that, and if we go back over to our media bin, we can see it's in our spare change bin. Let's also, while we're at this, go ahead and import the animated bug into it from the Vegas project. So we have two of them. 
And uh, you can also add the sound. You can add one of these for music, etc. Like I said, it makes your workflow so much easier. Well, we'll go back to Spare Change, click on that, and if we highlight one of the clips, you'll notice an array of other buttons are highlighted too, pretty much where you can use them. The first one is to remove the project or the selected media from the project. If we click that, uh, there goes Spare Change 1980 uh, Marquette Room. Let's pull it back though, because we want it. So this is actually the delete. The next one is the properties, which will tell you about the, uh, the format used, uh, the resolution, frame rate, field order, uh, aspect ratio, and of course the alpha channel, which we'll get to later on about the alpha because you can do some cool things with that. And um, so that's pretty much what that does, is the properties. Now the next one is something pretty neat, and I've used this many a times. And what this does is it applies the effect to the clip and the media bin so you don't have to do it on your timeline. And to do that, what you would want to do is highlight, or if you wanted to do it to multiple, what you do is you highlight them all. You'll highlight the, uh, the selected media, click Media Effects, and this will come up. I've already added this because I've gone through this just to make sure everything was going to work okay. And um, you'll see we've got the magic bullet. Let me just take that off. And what I'll do is I'll do it again here for you. We'll click that and we see our effects come up, all the different effects. And what we'll do is we'll just add an HD look to it. We'll click OK on that. And for our preset on this, let's give it a Berlin type style. There we go. And we'll click that off. So that entire Berlin HD overlay is on that clip. So we don't have to add it in the timeline, which is really neat. Now the next button is the actual preview play. So if you have a clip highlighted and you click play, it's going to preview for you over here in the in the uh, uh, tremor window. And of course, the next one after that is stop, so you can stop it. Now something that I use on the actual preview window, which we'll get to later, is the the auto preview, and that's what the next button is. And you can use this on your media stuff too, just to see what's going on with it. But um, I recommend just this is just myself for the project media you want to leave that off so we'll do that and the next button after that are the views it depends on how you want to list it if you want you want to list it uh, detailed or thumbnail we of course have it on thumbnail because I like to see what we're looking at or you can put it on list it just kind of depends on your preference on that and after that you'll see a magnifying glass now the magnifying glass is a search feature if you're looking for a particular clip that you already have named and written down you can find it really easy with the search feature so that's pretty much the overall tools here on the media bin well the media bin we've talked about it but I want to kind of go into the trimmer a little bit but I'm not going to go over it entirely but I have to go into the trimmer to show you some stuff here uh, but before I do that I want to kind of give you guys this little heads up something that's always kind of driven me crazy about uh, Vegas is if uh, let me go ahead and reset this and turn it off so you guys can see this but um if you go into the media bin and let's say you double click the file it's gonna drop it straight down as an event on the timeline now this can cause problems and as you can see I've still got that effect up there um, this can cause problems because let's say you're editing something and uh, you accidentally double click some media and it drops it down the timeline and you're seeing there previewing this really long project you worked on and all of a sudden this clip comes up and you're like where did this thing come from and then you have to search through all the different uh, all the different events you've placed in and, and then delete it well there's a simple way to prevent that from happening and that's actually having the the clip that you double click in the media bin go into the trimmer rather than as an event on the timeline and you do that by let me delete these here on the bottom you do that by going up to option click options and preferences and on the general tab you want to go all the way down to the bottom and you'll see double click on media file loads uh, into trimmer instead of tracks well make sure that's checked hit OK and you if you double click on it what's gonna happen is it's gonna go straight into the trimmer so you won't have that happen in your project so that's that's a useful little hint and let me go over 
something that's relevant to in the media bin, but I've got to use the trimmer for it. And that is subclips. Subclips are pretty much a shortened down, trimmed down version that you can have in your media bin to place into your project rather quickly. It's useful, like for instance, if you're recording an event like a speech and you don't have any breaks in it, um, to go in and make a sub clip in your media bin. It's also useful too if you're uh, capturing video that from analog and trimming it down so you have a sub clip. Now creating a sub clip is pretty easy and there's several different ways to do it. You can do it on the timeline, you can do it through the explore uh, window and I'll get into those a little bit more detail later in the project but I'm going to show you one way to do it here in the project media with the trimmer. What you want to do is you want to double click or drag over the file that you want to create into the subclip. Go over to the media bin and make sure you have um, clicked where you want the subclip to go. We want it to go in spare change. Now go over to the, the file here and have your in marked region right there and then your out wherever you want it to stop which let's put it right there so we have these two little ends cut off on the end now make sure this is highlighted by double clicking it and I just made it go over but there we go I got it to the same areas so you get the general idea now once you have that done go up to the top of the trimmer and you'll see create subclip click that and what's gonna come up is a little uh, uh, create subclip uh, box you'll name it whatever you want to we're just gonna keep this as subclip one and you can also reverse the clip if you want to to it really depends on what you're using it for so we click OK and it creates a subclip up here in our media bin for us so that we don't have to use the entire clip and of course we can drag that down onto our timeline and uh, use it without cutting it anymore so there you go that's how to create one way of creating a subclip within Vegas Pro 9. Well guys, in the next video I'm going to go into the trimmer a lot more detailed so that you'll understand that and then we should be getting on to the timeline and, and creating events and stuff that and adding effects and everything so that uh, you can learn more about actually editing. Well guys, I'm Mark Absalon and I hope you've enjoyed this edition of 